What the program now, <coughs> as you'll see, is a, a section for brief comments and contributions from the floor. Now, what I've done is asked a few people who knew Jeff very well and worked closely with him, just to have a, a two or three minutes or three minutes or so, just to make a few comments of their own personal recollections. And we have a number of people who have said they'd like to say something, and there may be one or two more. If I first of all clear that, just so it's not distracting. <clears throat> so I don't know if we want to take any particular order, but uh, we've mentioned someone several times over here, and that's, that's Graham Winch, because although I didn't go to London Business School, instead I had a different experience, which was good, but, but rather different, and a pleasant location, and in some ways more pleasant, but hard to compete against a view over Regent's Park, but I remember Graham saying something that the view over the Plymouth Hoe isn't too bad either. And so I'd like to welcome Graham Winch up here to talk about uh, some of his experience working with Jeff. And I'll come back to Graham later. So Graham, would you like to come up for a few minutes to say a few words? Sorry, not used to mics. Um, thank you for asking me to say a few words about Jeff. Yes, I was indeed one of the happy few that uh, started in Pemberton Drive in, in Bradford and it was, it was a very exciting environment to be in. Uh, as was said earlier, at that time we were part of Control Engineering, which seemed a sensible place for system dynamics to be. Um, but Jeff was absolutely determined to focus system dynamics at Bradford on business applications. Um, at the time, system dynamics was being used for a wide range of application, urban development, uh, the famous or infamous uh, world dynamics, uh, and uh, regional planning, regional development, uh, predator-prey modelling. Um, Jeff, I think, referred to these as save the whale studies. Uh, and that wasn't what uh, Jeff was interested in. I say he was a, a avowedly a business-oriented uh, modeller. He was interested in how businesses uh, operated and how to make businesses operate uh, more successfully. Um, John is absolutely correct. Dynamica was started because I was whinging, as I tend to do quite frequently, uh, about the difficulty of getting papers published. And he challenged me to start a journal. Uh, we got uh, good support from the University of Bradford. Jeff was behind it all the time. And hey, 1975, second uh, uh, issue of uh, Dynamica, I got a paper published, so it worked for me. <laughs> uh, and I think in a, in a sense, John hit on one of the absolutely key features of Jeff, that um, he, was, he was innovative, um, but he liked other people to innovate as well. And he, and he wouldn't just say, oh yeah, well, we could think about doing something along those lines. Uh, Jeff's reaction was, well, do it then. You know, I'll support you, do it. Uh, and that's something I greatly valued and, and a model that I'd like to think that in my academic and business consulting career, subsequently, I've been able to utilize. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have to <coughs> vouch for that in particular because I went to work with Graham on a, a project called Computer Aided Visioning um, about assisting companies face fundamental changes and how they might prepare for that using simulation and modelling approaches. So I have to say that that, um, that idea stuck with me for quite a few years and still works for me today, um, that idea of being able to envision a, a different future. 
So that was a, a, an idea that has flowed through from Graham, from Jeff, through Graham, and through, through my work as well. So, and it, that idea still hasn't gone away, Graham. So it's quite a, an enduring concept. And I'll say something else about that later. Now, <clears throat> in no particular order, but would Brian, where's Brian? Brian, would you like to come to the stage and say a few words? Brian Dangerfield. Yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Right, what do I remember about Jeff? Um, I first met him about 1975-76. I'd started as a junior lecturer at the University of Salford. And um, being interested in system dynamics as a methodology, people said, well, there's this group over in Yorkshire, only over the Pennines. You should network with them, get involved. So over I went, and they used to have a, a research seminar every Wednesday. Um, I think it was a Wednesday, but almost every Wednesday I went over. And um, I got so entwined with the group that many people who were outside thought I was a member of the group. And I, Salford and Bradford having similar names, it also made for a lot of problems. Um, when I first met Jeff, it was in Pemberton Drive. And he said, uh, you know, hello, and I got talking. He immediately corrected me that it was not systems dynamics, but it was system dynamics, and I was to remember that. He also said, um, why are you driving your consumer durables model with data? <laughs> do you really need to do that? You know, sort of making me think, and I thought, well, this, this is why I'm coming over here, because I'm getting a lot of... Um, um, prodding and, 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 and good stimulus here. So I kept going over. And we, we transferred to the management centre. The group transferred to the management centre, you, as you've heard. And we used to, um, beforehand, um, have lunch before the, the seminar um, at a pub just off Manningham Lane. And um, I used to have to watch. I didn't get sat next to Jeff because a hand kept appearing and my, a lot of my chips would disappear. This was a, re a regular thing and I, I sort of had to negotiate my way around to uh, avoid that. Um, 76 came the first conference and um, he, Jeff said, what, we've got the possibility of going to Norway to this conference in Yilo. Um So do you want to come with the group? And this has sort of badged me as part of the group when I wasn't really. And, um, and we all went to Norway, and I think this was one of the first conferences where people from the States, Jay Forrester, um, Peter Senge, Al Graham, Nat Mass, and a few others, um, we integrated. And there's, there's a photo on somewhere on the System Dynamics Society website um, of that particular first, first conference, uh, which predated the Society and the regular um, conferences that you, you have now. And uh, we all got paid for speaking. Now, this, this was a rarity. <laughs> we all went back with a load of Norwegian kroner in our pockets. Um, Jorgen Randers, who'd organised the conference, had managed to get money from the Norwegian Research Council. So we, we got paid, and I thought, this is good. Uh, these conferences, you, you get paid <laughs> for speaking. Uh, and then a few more years elapsed, and one turned up in Mons in Belgium. <laughs> And Jeff again said, do you want to join us, you know, the PhD students going over? So we, we go via Brussels to Mons. And um, again, we got paid. This time it was in Belgian francs, as was then. And um, Jeff, Jeff had difficulties organising us. There was a load of PhD students. There was me. And, and we were a problem to him. I mean, we, <laughs> he had the difficulty of getting a lot of... Uh, well, two or three Middle Eastern gents through passport control, and you know, even then, um, somebody of Middle Eastern origin, you know, attracted the attention of the uh, of the immigration people. And then I was I was a big problem to him because we, we we went to Mons, we come back on the train, and I say to Jeff, um, I've still got my hotel key here, <laughs> and in those days it was a physical key, and um, so we had to organise to get that ship back to the hotel and then I bought some French cheese and um, decided to put it in a left luggage office 
<laughs> it was a hot day. And when we all came back, Brian's going to collect his luggage. <laughs> There's a guy on behind the couch said, Le Fromage, Monsieur, Le Fromage. Um, and they had to take it out and put it into a, a fridge. And I'm, you know, I, I'm sort of saying, sorry, Jeff, you know, the, the, firstly the key, then the cheese. Um, and, and, and we all get back and we said, There's this money, you know, we got paid again. <laughs> And that, I came down to Earth the following year because in 1980 there was a conference in America which was piggybacked on an IEEE conference. <clears throat> Went out there and it was in the hotel which I think this year's conference is being held, the Hyatt in, uh, in Cambridge in, uh, near Boston. And um, <laughs> there we did get paid. <laughs> and I'd gone assuming I would be paid and I had real difficulties with Salford when I got back as to. Uh, I, in the end, they gave me a loan and I had to pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, 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 I'd introduced to, I was introduced to conferences where you got paid to, to speak. I was, I was quite amazed. Um, just a few things about Jeff's, Jeff's uh, writing, because, uh, you know, to me, he is one of the, the great polymaths that I've met in academia. I mean, he, 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 he bestrides C.P. Snow's two cultures, sciences and arts, like a colossus. And I don't, I've not met anyone who, who's got this similar capability. Before the two books on SD, there was a book on uh, mathematics in management and decision analysis. So they were sort of operational research type books, which is what you know, he taught at London Business School at the time. Then after SD, and he started to get disillusioned with SD, and he wrote his book on strategy. Then the book, Riches Beneath Our Feet, the mining engineering book, and the history of mining in the UK. And now, I, I believe there's a military book could well be, be coming out. This, this, is, this is formidable. And by the way, there was two books that <clears throat> the uh, University of Bradford printer produced, which was really... I suppose, written for the PhD students. One was called um, um, Equations for Systems, and one was called System Dynamics Problems. And a few years ago at Salford, we digitized those because of the PhD students I've got. And so anybody who wants a copy, um, I, I can give them the PDFs of this. Um, so, you know, Jeff, Jeff had an enormous range of, um, of output. And, uh, as I say, I don't think it's, it's, um, it, it, it's far from saying that, that he is actually a huge polymath. And um, I was very privileged to know him. And um, <clears throat> I learned a hell of a lot from him. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brian. Well... <clears throat> The third person I knew who wanted to say something is Mike Kennedy, who's now at the University of Bedfordshire, but Jeff was a visiting professor at the South Bank University, so hand over to Mike. You've got a, some words for a couple of minutes? Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Well, my first uh, real meeting with Jeff, very similar to, to yours, was at Trivenham. Uh, we got in touch with him to discuss some ideas with my first doctoral student, Demby Williams, some of you uh, may recall. And it was his welcome that really uh, enabled us to uh, strengthen and build that team. So that inspiration and leadership we've heard from some of the other speakers, pretty much helping us uh, to create a, a new research group to add to that. And after uh, Jeff retired from, uh, fr fr from uh, the Royal Medical College of Science, Trivenham, the University of Cranfield. Uh, he joined, um, I was very honoured that he accepted an invitation to join us, our research group at London South Bank University, as uh, a visiting professor of strategic modelling. Uh, and he worked uh, w w with us and our research students. And, um, and later on, of course, uh, that that group uh, hosted uh, quite a few of the um, the UK system of dynamics societies events and management meetings and so on. 
So you know, a, a, really, uh, a, a really valuable part in establishing that, which comes with the tradition that we've heard uh, of, of nurturing new innovations, new groups, uh, that the, the friendship and collegiality that you've, that you've heard elsewhere. Um, again, we had visiting uh, academics. Uh, the one that perhaps most significant was a chap called Enrico Sapino from the University of Bologna, who uh, I'm still very actively working with um, and has done me the honour of uh, uh, giving me a visiting professor in professorship in time at the University of Bologna. So, um, the, the similar, similar to what we've said already, but just to close, uh, somebody mentioned earlier on with spreadsheets um, and my original occupation was as a banker and as an accountant um, and when I started off a spreadsheet was a piece of what we call double analysis a large piece of paper so spreadsheet and, and that's where that expression spreadsheet came from that later on became a piece of computer software and I was telling some people earlier on when I started in banking bank branches didn't have any computers in them whatsoever. There was a computer centre which had the kind of card input um, that, that we've been hearing about. So how things have changed. Thank you very much. All right, well, those three people wanted to say something, but is anybody else wanting to make a brief contribution there from the back? It's Tony, isn't it? So, uh, can you just say where you're from? Because not many people might know you. I'm, no, I'm that's not true. from Social Media, so if you could just Hello. explain briefly. I'm Tony Taylor, and I'm not from anywhere because I'm retired now. So, I don't have anything on my badge that says what I do. Why am I here? I'm here because I just want to say a big thank you to Jeff. And as I've been listening, uh, I've been looking back in my mind on Jeff's influence on my life. And even though I haven't been working in system dynamics since I got my PhD. Ah, now there's an influence, the PhD. I was lecturing in Liverpool, it was the Polytechnic in those days, 72 to 74. Long time ago, isn't it? And I thought, if I'm going to have an academic career, and I want to be a professor, then I've got to have a PhD. First degree, master's degree is not good enough. You've got to be a doctor. I couldn't think of anything at all that interested me to go into all that work to do a PhD. And then I heard a talk by Jeff one day. I can't recall where it was. I was heavily involved in the OR Society. Uh, so maybe it was at a talk at the OR Society meeting. Can't recall where it was. But what I can recall very clearly is when I came out of that meeting, I knew what I was going to do. I knew this was something I was going to use as my, my stepping stone to be a professor. I talked to Jeff afterwards, I got linked in with him uh, at Bradford. I was, uh, was part-time extramural. Can you imagine doing a PhD part-time extramural? Luckily I didn't have a job that was uh, as demanding as today's jobs in industry would be, where you're working pretty much from early in the morning to late at night, just to keep your job. Uh, I was lecturing so I had a bit of time. So I started the PhD, part-time extramural. After a year I went off to Malaysia to teach in the University of Science in the island of Penang. And for two years, I finished the PhD in three years, in two years, I had no real contact with Jeff, never saw him, but we were, and there were no emails in those days, so I used to write a chapter of my thesis, we called them working papers, and I'd put it in the post, and it would take three weeks or a month before I got a reply. Can you imagine? Today's instantaneous world, and that's how long it took. So while he was reviewing chapter two, I'd already written chapter three. I just hope he didn't make too many changes to chapter two. And that's how it went on for two years. And finally, I had this big, this big book, all bound over there, all typed. And I noticed Graham's paper that we saw on the screen there. You could see it was type, written on a typewriter. That's how things were in those days. So off, off went my, uh, my PhD back to Britain. I posted it. And Jeff fixed up the Viva. He fixed up the Viva with uh, Professor Pat Rivette. Some of you may know him from operational research days. Through Jeff, I got into the world of system dynamics. I got the PhD out of it. 
I didn't get an academic career as it happens. I went back into the commercial world. In the last 30 years, I've, uh, I've been doing a line management job. But through him, I got into the Athenaeum Club for my Viva. Nobody would let me into the Athenaeum Club other than that. Um, I published a whole range of papers and went to a lot of conferences in, remember in Stockholm and in Brussels and in Thailand. None of that I would have done if it hadn't been for Jeff. And I'm sure over the years, as I've applied for jobs and gone for interviews and so on, I'm sure having that doctorate has helped a little bit, maybe, to give me the edge on other candidates for those jobs. And in fact, one of my last 10 years has been in Nigeria. You don't need much of an edge in Nigeria, but I'm sure it helped. And some of our friends out there, my wife and I's friends, um, and I don't talk about the PhD to anybody generally, nobody really knows about it, and it came out one day, and I explained what it was that I'd been doing, and I could see their eyes glazed over. And after that, I became a doctor of difficult sums. That's what they used to call me. So without Jeff, it wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have had all those wonderful things happening earlier in my life, and I probably wouldn't even have ended up going to Nigeria, where I banked a lot of money and didn't spend very much, retired three years ago, and I'm loving life. I don't have to go to work anymore. And I think Jeff was a large part of that. So I'd just like to say thank you to Jeff and to his family for supporting him, which helped me get to where I am today. So thank you, Jeff. I assume he's up there. Of course he is. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>